Hi friends, have you ever heard of a chariot? I recently did some research about ancient chariots and found some cool pictures of them. Let me tell you and show you what I found. A chariot is a type of carriage driven by a charioteer. The charioteer steers the horses that pull the chariot. Chariots were used by armies to carry important people. They were also used in war as a place where someone could shoot enemies with bows and arrows, or used by hunters to hunt wild animals. Chariots were also for racing, and simply just as a convenient and quick way to travel for many ancient people. Two people usually rode in a chariot, sometimes three, and the third person usually was carrying a large umbrella to protect people from the hot sun. In today's Bible story, we will learn about a time when the Holy Spirit sent Philip to a man who was riding in a chariot. But more about that soon. Stay tuned. We have a new big picture question. Why does the church exist? Remember that the church isn't a building, it's the people, believers who gather to glorify God. But why? Why does God unite believers into the church? Well, the church exists to glorify God by worshiping Him, showing His love, and telling others about Jesus. The early church definitely had some struggles. Some members were selfish like Ananias and Sapphira. Other members were arrested, mistreated, hurt or even killed like Stephen was because of their faith. But through it all, God was using the struggles to strengthen and to grow His church in various ways. All of this was done by the Holy Spirit's power. Today, we are going to learn about a time when one man led another to Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our story is called Philip and the Ethiopian. An angel of the Lord told Philip, a follower of Jesus, to go to a desert road between Jerusalem and Gaza. So Philip went. On the road was a man from Ethiopia. He was an important official to the queen of Ethiopia. The man had come to worship in Jerusalem and now he was on his way home. He sat in his chariot reading aloud the words of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit told Philip to go to the chariot, so Philip ran up to it. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked the man. The official replied, How can I unless someone explains it to me? He invited Philip into his chariot, and Philip sat with him. The official was reading these words from Isaiah. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. He was treated unfairly, and his life is taken away. The official asked, Was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? Isaiah was talking about the Messiah, so Philip began to tell the man the good news about Jesus. As they traveled down the road, they came to some water. What would keep me from being baptized? The official asked. Then the official told the chariot to stop. He and Philip went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit took Philip away. The official continued home and he was very happy. The Ethiopian official knew what the Old Testament prophets said, but he did not understand that they spoke about Jesus. The Holy Spirit led Philip to help the official understand the good news about Jesus. That good news was that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead, just like the Old Testament prophets said. How much do you remember from the Bible story? Question number one. 
Why did Philip travel to the spot where he met the Ethiopian official? Do you remember? The Holy Spirit told him to. Question number two. Which prophet's writings was the Ethiopian official reading? Do you remember? It was Isaiah's. Question number three. How did the Ethiopian react to the gospel? Do you remember? The Ethiopian believed it and was baptized. Question number four. How can we share the gospel with others? What do you think? Well, it's important for us to study God's word and pray for God to give us opportunities to share and then to have the courage to speak up. The Holy Spirit will guide us and give us wisdom to know what to say. I encourage you to look for ways to speak about the gospel to people in your life. Question number five. What should we do if someone rejects the gospel? What do you think? Well, let me just tell you, people will reject the gospel. The Bible tells us that they will. But I also want you to know that anyone who rejects the gospel is rejecting God, not you. We should be respectful and kind towards everyone, even those who reject the gospel. God doesn't want us to be discouraged by rejection, but be encouraged by his power so that we continue sharing. And I will also want you to know that there will be people who accept the gospel and understand because the Holy Spirit is doing a work in their life. Question number six, our last question. Other than sharing the gospel, how can we show God's love to others? What do you think? Well, you could help a classmate with homework and play with someone new at recess or share a cool toy with a sibling or volunteer with your family to serve in some way in your community. These are all ways you can show love and ways you can lead others by sharing the gospel. The Holy Spirit led Philip to tell the Ethiopian man about Jesus. We can share about Jesus too. Paul often talked about the church as the body. Jesus is the head of the church body. That means he is the most important. He leads and guides us. He is the greatest treasure and the reason we can be saved. Let's learn our new key passage from Colossians 1.18. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. so that he might come to have first place in everything. First, first, first place in everything. First, first, first place in everything. Colossians 1.18 He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. so that he might come to have first place in everything. First, first, first place in everything. First, first, first place in everything. Colossians 1.18 You know, sometimes I wish that every opportunity to share the gospel was as easy as just walking up to a person and then asking me to help them understand the Bible. The Holy Spirit really set up an incredible situation for Philip in our story, didn't he? Philip obeyed joyfully, and the Ethiopian official became a believer. Now, Philip didn't make excuses about how far away the desert road was or 
how uncomfortable he would feel running up to a stranger's chariot to talk to him. Instead, prompted by the Holy Spirit, Philip just obeyed. Jesus' final command to his disciples was to make disciples and baptize them. The early church took that command very seriously. As soon as the Ethiopian man believed, he asked to be baptized to show his new faith and to follow the Lord in obedience. When Philip was carried away by the Spirit, which was so cool, wasn't it? The Ethiopian went on his way rejoicing. He was headed home so we can know that he carried the truth of Jesus with him to Ethiopia. All along, God's plan had been to glorify his name through the church. The church, remember, exists to glorify God by worshiping him, showing his love, and telling others about Jesus. The Ethiopian official knew that the whole Old Testament prophets, he knew what they said, but he didn't understand that they spoke about Jesus. The Holy Spirit led Philip to help the official understand the good news about Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead, just like the Old Testament prophets said. Let's pray together. Dear God, I thank you so much that you can help us understand the, the Bible from, um, from just teaching us, Holy Spirit, and, and helping us to understand but I also thank you for people like Philip in the Bible and people around us who help us understand too. I also thank you today that we could hear this incredible story that reminds us of the Holy Spirit's role in helping us to understand and to leading us into obedience. And Lord, I just thank you so much for that. I pray that you will help us to have the courage to share the gospel and I pray that you will give us opportunities to do so. And then when we see those opportunities, to have the courage to take them. I pray that you'll give us the very words to speak, Holy Spirit. When someone asks us uh, or when we sense that they need to understand the gospel and that they don't. I pray for those who are listening to my voice. I pray, God, that they would come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And that, Holy Spirit, you would open their eyes and ears to understand. And I pray that they would come to know Jesus. I pray for their families. I pray for the families of those who are Christians already, that we will all grow in, our, in the grace and knowledge of you. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.